show that is a podcast it is a podcast that is a show i don't know what i'm saying uh and i'm joined as i am every week by my friends binary gary uh who is a professional dad today um full time all the time and allison uh who is not a professional she's an amateur coffee drinker um also, all day, all all the time. I'm um, I would like to start by doing something different today. Uh, I would like to take it down a notch um, because we have some uh, listener listener questions and and they're excellent. But um, uh, one of them comes from uh, one of them. I usually on binary jazz when we have listener questions, we don't reveal the email address uh, of the person uh, submitting the questions because that would be rude. Um, and we don't do anything with their email addresses. We're not gonna like sell them or, you know, spam you or stalk you or anything. Um, but uh, it's okay where you can give us any email address, including a fake email address. So one of our questions uh, is from Fakey McFakerson. And uh, the email address is-, is Are we, is that a real name? Yes, Fakey, <laughs> my yeah. friend Fakey from from high school. Um, yeah. And the email address is I listen all the time at binaryjazzforever dot club. And um, you didn't have that domain, did you? It, well, you know what? Uh, I kind of think that we should now that somebody has the email address. Uh, binaryjazzforever dot club seems to be something we should have. Um, so oh, okay. So, um, like a hotmail type service where you can get your own like vanity email address. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's okay. What, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome you guys. Uh, it's been a while. It it's it's been a week. It's been a while, it's been a while. as far as our listeners are concerned, well, yeah. but it's been a while for us. Yeah, it's been a while for us. Yeah, I missed you all. It's good to see you. I I went on a lake and I didn't fall in, so that was good. Did you? like use some kind of flotation device or you i'm a little yes. confused here yes I, okay. I, I, I that makes it a lot easier to go in a lake doesn't it it's true yeah <laughs> although i did have a i did have a moment where i was the first time i went back out in the lake after having fallen in when i was in denver uh and i was in an inflatable kayak and i'm in in the lake and, and i'm like oh my god it's so big i have no idea how deep this is i'm totally gonna drown but I didn't. Well, fortunately, no methane clouds to disturb your boating or no weird currents. No Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, yeah. no Bermuda Triangle. It's or any kind of triangle, really. It's not that you're foraying into like lakes and not like the ocean. Yeah. That's a whole different it is. thing to tackle later on. Mm -hmm. So did you, did you do paddleboarding or you went kayaking or kayaking? Uh, so we have an inflatable kayak that we got recently. Uh, we also have an inflatable uh, paddleboard that, uh, that was my birthday present to Aaron uh, last year that I didn't actually get until this year. Um, so, uh, how do, we you we said inflatable paddleboard? Yeah. How do you like that? Um, it's a, it drags a little bit, um, she said. Okay. Um, it's, it's not as maneuverable as, as the rigid ones, but the one that we got is, is fairly good. Um, it it's pretty solid i mean it's it's not um it's not like a kayak an inflatable kayak just one piece it's it's actually pretty pretty rigid but it's a lot thicker and um and yeah it's not quite as maneuverable um and it was it was sort of a tough test too because there's a lot of um there's a lot of, there's wind so there's a little bit of, of current in the lake and there are other boats so it was a little bit of a, a tough test it would but it would still need to be like pretty ideal conditions uh we thought uh for it to be something that you could actually stand up on easily so so i think i derailed where were you going with faking mcfakerson 
I was just I just wanted to call attention to the name and the email address, honestly. Like we'll we'll get oh, okay. to Fakie's question later, but <laughs> well <laughs> that seems optimistic, but okay. <laughs> but I, I really just wanted to talk about the binary jazz uh, forever at uh, dot club. I listen all the time at binary jazz forever dot club. Honestly, the fact that there anybody would even create a fake email address that says that they listen all the time. Uh, <laughs> And, and binary jazz forever shows us that that we're, I don't know we have at least one well more than one because we have our one our one fan on the show um, so so we have at least two uh, people that actually <laughs> listen I know do we this fakey is gonna surpass me I mean maybe do we, we know should that invite... Allison is not actually fakey though well Allison when she submits questions she puts her own name so I I'm um I'm stupidly honest it didn't actually occur. It didn't i'm and my creativity i guess is lacking i didn't even it didn't even occur to me to go as fakie mcfakerson <laughs> it doesn't doesn't seem really natural does it i mean we, i i think that like going with tradition if if we do really have a a lifetime fan then we should probably invite fakie mcfakerson on the show so if you're out there fakie well send him an email and you, would, <laughs> and you would like to appear on Binary Jazz, uh, you can send us an email, not at a domain that doesn't exist. Maybe the well, challenge- Well, you can send it there. The, you won't read the, it. Yeah, the, the, cha the challenge is if they buy the domain, set up that actual email. <laughs> it's true. Well, if they um, buy the domain, then-, then then, then they scooped us. Props, props, yeah, it's true. And props to them for, for that's, that's an investment now into the future of binary chess. <laughs> it's a commitment level that I don't even know if we have. Yeah. <laughs> so to that end, a year ago, the genesis of this entire operation was born. You mm -hmm. realize that? Mm -hmm. You do realize that? I, I do because I got a, I was looking at, um, I was doing a domain transfer of my main domain jazz sequence.com. And I was looking at all of our other domains and it's in binary jazz renews in December. So we, back in August of last year, you posted on Twitter, something about explosions in the sky. Oh, is there anything better than explosions in the sky? And I said, it makes for a bad Pandora station. And you said, Think you meant great or something and that turned into like a 15 or 20 year more thread <laughs> conversation on twitter mm -hmm. the worst place for conversations to take place but naturally where we would do it mm -hmm. um and the original genesis i think that there was going to be a topic we debated it and you threatened to flip me over <laughs> so well, yeah. and that's the thing is that you you two don't argue nearly as much as i anticipated <laughs> we'll get on that <laughs> <laughs> That's just because when, when Gary says something I don't agree with, I just shut him down. Yeah, it's just like, no. No. <laughs> I try to be contrary <laughs> as much it's as possible. Stop right there. <laughs> I need to bring more divisive topics to the table and less, less unknowns and more just like heated. No, I don't actually, I don't actually want to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And on that note, Let's, uh, um, what, what is our topic, topic is today? The bottom of Allison's coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> that was some rude timing, Chris. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I did it intentionally. It's my own fault I, for bringing that uh, The topic for this week is application. A what? Application. Application. Is this one that you expect us to know? No, not? not at all. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Well, <laughs> congratulations. Or to um, applicate. That helps you. So that is a thing. It's yeah. A thing. I filled out, <laughs> I filled out the half application. dozen applications when, when I was looking to move to development. <laughs> yeah, and my dad, my dad told me to uprime myself. <laughs> <laughs> and and, I, and, and I, I still don't feel like I have enough application to my projects. <laughs> Um, well, no, an, an so, application. An application is is a software program. <laughs> I, you know, I, I double click on the application, mm -hmm. and then it opens. Uh, does it have anything to do with apricots? I really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where no. else are you going to keep your inventory of, of produce? <laughs> yeah, a produce inventory. <laughs> 
system. Yeah. Um, it is a, a bootleg store you can install on your iPhone. Just to sell fruit? The application store, yeah. <laughs> the application store. <laughs> um, uh, well, no, if Applicate is a thing. Uh, well, that's when you're creating a new app for the application store. The Applicate, the Applicate, the app. Yeah. I mean, if, 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 if Applicate was not a thing, then application would be a range of mountains that is not quite as impressive as the Appalachians. Oh, it's like the little sibling. The smaller, the smaller version, the application mountain range. Well, you're picking little, little and you're picking the little Applicate, little Smokies. The little Smokies. Which is also those tiny sausages you get in a can. More like, more like the foothills. Yeah. The foothills of the applications. <laughs> Where it's more just like little ant little molehills that you can kind of no higher than like three feet. <laughs> there is a hill in Florida that they call a mountain. I think it's Sugarloaf Mountain. I might be wrong on that. Um, I think it, the elevation is 350 feet above sea level. Wow. <laughs> I don't, is that even a hill? <laughs> it's pretty yeah. stunning. It's, it's, it's in the center of the state. It's near Claremont. It's, uh, it's pretty fantastic. I might have a name wrong, but it's pretty fantastic. I would it's a, of, love it's a heck of a view. <laughs> you can yeah, see an entire fair. county away. <laughs> I feel like to climb to the, the peak of that would really be a whole, a whole weekend outing. Like you'd want to bring some snacks, <laughs> some water, maybe a camel back of water just in case. Alligator repellent. I'm, I'm, the funny thing is, is like I'm saying all this and like it probably is like quite lovely. <laughs> it's probably like quite like a lovely little jaunt. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how long it takes to, to climb to the peak. I mean, the peak. The mount. <laughs> yeah. Is it, I mean, is it like mountainy or is it really just like a grassy hill? It's a grassy hill. It's a grassy hill. Oh, sorry. I didn't surprise you there. Yeah, it's just, I mean, there's, it's like every, like, hill in Florida. Like, it's, it's kind of rolling, and if it were in any other state, it would be, it's pretty flat here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I think there's a slight incline. Did anybody else notice that? <laughs> so I, this is, this is uh, the kind of flatlander I am. Um, you know, like when elevation changes and your ears pop? Um, I get that on bridges in Jacksonville that tower dozens of feet above sea level. Ooh, I don't know about um, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's like coming over the bridge. Wow, my ears popped. That's amazing. A little embarrassing. What, what happens when you're in an airplane? Do you just not I mean, it, in airplanes? No, I don't. I mean, it, they pop more, that's all. <laughs> you get into the plane and the plane moves five feet. My up. head expands oh, like a balloon in a vacuum until it explodes. Yes. Well, he's, not, he's not properly applicated. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't applicated himself before the flight. Um, Applicate is a rural um, Italian stringed instrument. That would be an, an applicate. <laughs> no, we thought we covered that. That's a program to keep track of your produce. <laughs> Why did I take a sip of coffee? <laughs> I should have seen it coming from the hand gesture. And that is why you're an amateur. <laughs> it's, new. it's like I'm new here. <laughs> well, that... it's, it's true that you wouldn't pronounce in Italian. You wouldn't, you wouldn't pronounce it applicate. No. What, um... Oh, that's funny. Um... <laughs> I think when Gary paces, the creative juices flow more. It's possible, yeah. Her creative juices are all, all always flowing. As well as other juices. As well as yeah. <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to say yeah. that. <laughs> Come on, it's a baby. <laughs> you, you can't see the spit if I'm wearing at the moment. But no. as I was putting, in here, putting her in here, I'm like, oh, do I have time little, to change before this show? A little nah, liquid. Fine. Well, and she's in South Carolina. We're not going to go there. Let's some solid foods. So it's not all liquid. Was avocado um, her solid food? Because avocado she applicated, was. Because she applicated before the, before the show. 
Um, yeah, avocado was, she really likes peas, which is awesome. Sweet potato, our win. Some classics. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mean anything about, about what they will like when they're old enough to, to have. Not problems. at all. Nope, not at all. But I, like I, I, I do better. stand by the avocado as a strong start, though, in the right direction. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Potato. <laughs> Application has, to, has something to do with the passage of time. And Does it, or just uh, you pondering it has to do with the passage of time? <laughs> well, now oh. As we're applicating now, uh, and time is passing, <laughs> Are we advocating them? I don't know if we established that. We may be embarrassed when we find out we've been advocating all episode. <laughs> like, don't publish this one. That's disgusting. <laughs> we were advocating the whole time and nobody told us. <laughs> <laughs> your dirt is a showing. <laughs> your friend just said it. Um. Well, let's let's go to the well, Chris. Oh well. What are some? Yeah. Oh well. Um, so there seems to be a common theme of pirates in this series. Okay. Yeah. M meat products. Uh huh. Um, what else are there? Are common you themes? Could, you could applicate your meat. It's a particular. Uh, it's a particular curing process. The application you know, process. You know what this show's going to accomplish? I'm going to become a vegetarian. <laughs> And then our mission will have our secret and the series mission. will be over. That's it. Yeah. Because because all yeah, such a because all vegans like our our secret mission is to get all meat eaters to switch to, to veganism. That that's that's our mission. It's like communism. Like the more time you spend around us, the more vegetarian you will become until it is a full takeover. I'm I'm like I, I'm ambivalent about meat, like I don't have to have meat at every meal. It's just like, you know, some meals are great. Vegetarian. Sometimes I want a hamburger. Sometimes I want a Dyson Sphere, you know? No. What are you going to do? I, I don't. No, I've never wanted a Dyson Sphere, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's God. funny because Dyson Sphere will uh, appear in the, the questions as well. Oh, no. mm. <laughs> it comes up so often. Yeah. You can't help but think about it. I so uh, the other yeah, thing, so the other things in the binary jazz well, I think, are space. So oh, it's really binary. big. Yeah, it is really big. It's really big. <laughs> no, a, a somewhat bigger than the ocean. I, I was <laughs> trying to explain to someone again what the podcast was about, and I was like, "Well, we hit on like similar topics, you know, occasionally." Like I was like, "We've decided some things. Like space is really big and." You know, come to some conclusions. <laughs> you, you've, you've both read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? Yes. Yeah. Douglas Adams describes space in the beginning. Oh, space it's just so really, good. Really big. It's so incredible. Like, you think a walk to your local, like, chemist <laughs> is a long way, but wait until you see space. <laughs> it's so good. I need to read that after we finish this episode, just to remind myself how big space is. <laughs> That's true. Uh, we haven't had any launches in a while, and it looks like there's not anything major coming up for rocket launches. Yeah, it's just timing. But although I should say, like the last big one we had was the Parker Solar Probe, mm, yeah. um, which, outside of the launch, just amazing in general that Dr. Parker was there, who you know got to see the satellite image and launch, and we're going to explore the sun. Yeah, because he came up with the idea like I don't know forever ago, and it never was a decades. Yeah. yeah. Very awesome. Excited for him. And all the other folks involved in the process. I love I love when they show like footage of the people watching and cheering. It's like it's such good oh, I don't know. It's such it's a, the same like watching launches, I get the same feeling I get like when I've been really excited about a sports team and they win. Um, but there's like no like losers, you know? So yeah. And there's, there's, a less, thing to say. there's very, less, less Gatorade being poured over people. There, always, I, I don't know if that's always, true. There's always losers. If, any, if we've learned anything from our president, there's always losers and haters. Losers. 
And they're always I'm going to lose sure. and always going to hate, apparently. They can do it over there out of the out of the off camera. Yeah, they can do it off yeah. camera. They can, do it over there. they can apricate to themselves. My favorite picture of Mike Pence is when he visited Kennedy Space Center, and there's a big sign on a satellite that says, do not touch, and he's got his hand right on it. Yeah. Like, have you, you've seen that photo, right? Yep. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's classic. Think about that DNA heading up, and that's like what future species will know about us. <laughs> that, that satellite is. Well, not if we applicate not applicated. Not if we applicate properly, right? Applicate <laughs> properly and then launch the shuttle. That's how this is done. See, now at this point, we're just we're just inserting applicate into sentences uh, randomly, just to see if we're like if we like land on something. It's like throwing. Just turn against the wall. Yeah. To see, what yeah sticks. see what sticks. Yep. To see what applicates. <laughs> But it worked. Like the thing is, is that it really—it's actually very <laughs> versatile that way, and it kind of yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> is it too early to ask what it is? It's, it's never, never too early. Too early. <laughs> yeah, like it's too early to the answer. It's too not too early to ask. If you don't know anything about the show, like there's no real format <laughs> or rhyme or reason. The suggested format. Suggested. Um, yeah. So it means to bask in the sun. Oh, so we could have we, we could have accidentally landed on it. Totally, yeah. very much so. If if we just just kept doing, it. I don't think that bask in the sun is a thing that we specifically hit. Although many of the many of the uh, discussions about applicating and if we applicate properly, uh, <laughs> would have preferred to basking in the sun. So. I love basking in the sun. It's like a very, I, it's a very cat-like word to me where I just picture like a sunbeam and a cat in the sunbeam applicating. <laughs> applicating wildly. So good luck in integrating, that, integrating it somehow into day to day. <laughs> oh man, it's so, it's so there. You just have to find a good sunbeam. and The work is done for you. What are you doing over there lying on the carpet? I'm applicating. <laughs> Shh, leave me be. I must applicate in peace. Exactly. I don't know. That's also basking. It just sounds so joyful. You're not just like sitting. Right. Yeah, I'll right. To, be, to be fair, basking sounds better than applicating. No, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like it, genres are another topic we hit a lot. I feel like application would be the next level down, right? Like you can bask <laughs> in many things. You can bask in the wonder of um, the Dyson sphere or whatever, right? But but basking in the sun, like the application is, yeah, it's neat. I like this. Good word. Good word. I thought I'd try to bring something to the table we could integrate. Bring it back. Like I don't feel like people are using it in their vocabulary. Although I have learned things from this show. I have too, which is yeah, I. What? Don't sound so surprised, everybody. <laughs> I just—I mean, it's—it wasn't an—it wasn't a a goal when we set out to to do the show to like learn things. Education. Yeah, that was not a thing that that I thought was going to happen. So it is somewhat surprising. No, I was really here for more more disagreements and arguments. <laughs> not not arguments. And, I was here for more contrariness. Yeah, and I uh, I think what we've learned is that um, it's just not in our nature to be disagreeable no it is but you just dis you disagree and you shut it down there's no there's less yeah. back and forth. <laughs> although yeah yeah i think this is no there's back, back and forth area. yeah gary's walking back and forth right now <laughs> well now you're agreeing on the fact that there's back and forth <laughs> yeah we're really bad at no we're not <laughs> yes we are <laughs> That's not an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Does, does, a, does, a, does a successful podcast need an antagonist? No. Well, I guess it depends on the plot of the podcast, <laughs> which there is not. Oh, let's start, let's start there. That would probably be the first step. Let's get a plot. <laughs> there needs to Got be a, a narrative with like a beginning, middle, end. 
we talked about um, drowning last episode. Is that right? Probably. And then, Chris, and then, and then Chris found that YouTube video of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Flotation yeah. device company in in French. Yeah. Did that make the show notes by chance? Yeah. Oh, that I I started that video and I couldn't. So I, I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't either. I could. I didn't get to the part where he wasn't coming up for air. Yeah. It, when I, when so effective was that video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it must have been a flash thing looking at it. But when I played it years ago, like it, they, the way it was presented, like it was, I was actually at work and it was just so engaging. Like sitting at my desk, like <gasps> gasping and it, it was effective. It was effect we need more like public service announcements like that. I don't know that we do. I don't know. It's very fear-based unless like, I don't know. I like to be motivated, but I don't know if I like that sense of, dread in this case i feel like this is appropriate fear like you're on a boat you're in the middle of nowhere where are your life preserver right like that it's effective like the alternative is like don't you like living you should wear a life preserver <laughs> eh, but she's like, not quite not quite as effective but i feel like it it's a sense of fear of abandonment as well where like even if i have the life preserver my that boat just like they just took off like they're not even <laughs> you could see though he tried to turn but i mean in the waves and the wind like that you just can't you lose someone so quickly oh what a terrible topic golly i'm sorry i asked <laughs> <laughs> so if you've learned anything if you haven't watched that video in the show notes from last week you can choose to not click Ooh, yeah like I'm, I feel like I'm a generally strong swimmer. I would be the person that definitely wears the the life jacket, like no questions asked. And yet yeah. I still was like, well, now boats are like, well, this is just in the back of my head. <laughs> well, I, I definitely feel like I learned my lesson last time. I was wearing my life vest the entire time that I was on uh, up at the lake this last week, and. And like, not just like, oh yeah, I've got it on, but it's not yeah. buckled or anything. It's cool. Like, no, I was just like, we're doing this. Like, I, <laughs> no sure. question. It's definitely not going behind me because that's sure. not cool. You're like, we're going mm. for a drive to the grocery store, but you don't need the I vest. I need to wear the vest. I'm going to wear the vest anyway. I think I do need the Crossing vest. The bridge. There's water. Man, up yep. in the water. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I did that to you. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, falling in did contribute to that as well. Like it was really the kayak's fault. Yeah. Was, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. It was the kayak. Sorry. Fault. Sorry, the kayak treated you that way. Yes. Uh, we do have questions. Uh, we've got. Oh boy, do we? Good. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty. They're pretty awesome questions. Uh, so we'll get to Fakie's question first because, uh, as we know, Fakie McFakerson, uh, I listen all the time at BinaryJazz.club. Um, so that sounds like our like our fan club, which which also makes me think that we should have binary jazz forever dot club. Um, I don't know what our fan club would do. Uh, maybe it's for, uh, maybe it's up to our fan club to decide. Yeah, maybe they is it is it too organized to be like they should take some initiative and figure it figure it out. I mean, you've already. I don't feel like. But yeah, jazz I feel like they club. need some support from us to get off the ground at least. Yeah. Sure. When you say they, do you just mean me? Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's you and Fakie. <laughs> me and Fakie. You and Fakie, and I mean, there's a couple. There's a couple of regular submitters to our to our questions, yeah. and they are all welcome to join our Slack. Yeah, it's, oh, it's true. Worth. Join us on Slack. We'd love to have you. Yeah. A lot of times we talk nonsense all week. You can um, ask questions live. So, sometimes we yeah. complain about um, what a crazy week it's been, and then we get to decompress on an episode like this. Yeah. We get to advocate in each other's presence. Yeah, if you want to know how to get to our Slack, you can go to binaryjazz.us. Uh, and there's a button. No, no, this is the part where they need to take some initiative. Google it. <laughs> if you can't find your way there, you're like, no, you, if you have to ask, then. <laughs> no, just ping us on Twitter. We'll help you out. At Binary Jazz. I say it so confidently, like I'm so responsive on Twitter. <laughs> I've gotten bad at Twitter. You're, you're responsive when you are mooning. Mooning and don't long time. That's what started it. It was you, you, I think you mooned me. And then I've mooned you on Twitter, and Twitter then several had, times. And then we had the conversation about explosions in the sky. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> um, well, anyway. Who uses that anymore? <laughs> no. Not me anymore. 
Learn Fakie lesson. asks. Fakie asks. Allison's question about the lazy Susan for your house is a cool idea. This would be an interesting design problem to solve for places that have basements. <laughs> that was not a thing that we that we covered. So that that's true. If it, if it was rotating and it had a basement, uh, how would you get into the basement? Uh, maybe in the basement, uh, maybe then the basement could be a secret hideaway that is only accessed, accessed when the house slash basement stairs are aligned. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's just, it's all, it's all, uh, there's no ceiling in the basement and there's just, there's, there's the, um, the rings along the edge right. so you can climb down. The, yeah, the trap door and there's just, there's no stairs at all. You just drop in. <laughs> or this seems like a simple solution to like, if it if you just have a stairway coming inward to the basement from every direction, it's a circle, then the trapdoor can be anywhere and you open it and you're top of the stairs and down you go. Yeah, there you go. Also, I'm in Florida. What's a basement? <laughs> <laughs> um well I was gonna say like in, uh, in that in uh Betrayal at House on the Hill, which is a game that we got recently. Mm -hmm. Uh there it's you're you're traveling through this haunted house whatever and it, you keep adding tiles to the house um and there is a basement level but as far as i can tell we've played it like three or four times i don't know if there's a way to get into the basement that doesn't involve falling <laughs> that seems effective though yeah it does it it is effective for fall it's for getting to the basement i don't know that there's any way of getting out of the basement there's a there's a magic elevator that occasionally can can possibly get to the basement but other than that i don't know if there's a, a way to get out of the basement once you're in there um, so it's, it's, yeah, that's fun. That, that's also a way that you can get into your basement. That wasn't the question though, but. Oh, can I tell you an interesting basement story before we have a question? Sure. So there's this restaurant in town, um, called Goosel Pipe and Gutty Works. It calls the basement. And it's just, and it, well, it's a steampunk kind of place, right? Mm. Um, it's fantastic. Like pennies all over the walls and, <laughs> um, like it's, just, it's very cool. Very neat place. Um, I don't know what, it has a basement. I don't know what pennies are. We don't have them here. Oh. And, so pennies are small pieces of copper that are worth one one hundredth of a dollar. Um, that seems silly. So it would be, yeah, it would be insincere for me to say they're valueless because they're worth one one hundredth of a dollar, but they're pretty valueless. And I think that there's like, I, I think that it's 15 grand worth of pennies on the wall of this place, but I may be wrong. Um, Probably not. And you wouldn't, no, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's two floors and a basement and, um, and th that number, I mean, that would only be like 1.5 million pennies, right? I did the math right on the fly here. Um, in any case, this place has a basement. It is a, a Belgian uh, brewery with like, like religious artwork on the walls and the windows, but you're in the basement and you're like below sea level when you're down there. So it constantly has a pump and it's, it's bizarre. When it's being built, like driving past with people, I'd be like, what kind of moron builds basement in this area of Jacksonville? And uh, the place is fantastic. The owner, um, did a heck of a job uh, with that part of things. And what's it so. called again? Goozle Pipe and Gutty Works. Okay. I, I like yeah. it already. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a trip. It's a trip. So Fakie's actual question, uh, after discussing the basement and the uh, design and problem uh, of a you know, rotating house that we discussed uh, previously, uh, is if you had a secret room in your houses, speaking of all of us, uh, what would you use your secret uh, room for? Obviously, that's where I would store the bodies. I would use it for an office because I don't have an office. <laughs> I library. have an office. I'm in an office, so I don't need an office. <laughs> definitely like a library. Definitely have like bookshelves. Oh, and, like, yeah. Secret library. Yeah, yeah. Like there would be some sort of toggling. It would be like... <laughs> This house is so, this house is so normal and there's a secret room over here. What could possibly be in this? Oh, it's a library. It's clearly, clearly my Alice uncle, my uncle used to own a bed and breakfast in, I don't know what city, not too far from here, a couple hours from here in Florida. Now he lives back in the UK again, but for like a decade, he was down there. And um, in the library, there was a secret bathroom behind one of the bookshelves. A secret, a secret so you, bathroom. That's up in Yeah, so there was like entirely. There's a little knickknack you op you pulled, and the shelf opened, and you went in there and closed it behind you, and you were in the bathroom. It was. <laughs> I, I think it would be better if it was something besides a bathroom behind there, but it was still pretty cool. Secret, I don't know. Secret anything's uh, that's just always really exciting to me. Yeah, I do like the idea. I like the idea of going into like a basement and 
not being able, oddly enough, not being able to get out until a certain time has passed and it's like rotated and then, because then nobody can bother you as well, I guess is the thing. Ah, yes, the introvert's it's like, dilemma. It's like, <laughs> do not disturb for your life. Yeah, I don't like the idea of being stuck, but maybe if you knew a way out, but no one, I don't know. There's, there's got to be a solution there. Well, the, the well, secret, the secret room then does sort of fill that that niche. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like, she she's probably in there reading, but we can't we can't really figure it out. <laughs> the Alice and Tar story. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I would actually leave it empty. I think that'd be creepier. The room. You find a secret room. You open it. And you're like. It's just empty, but like spotless, like no cobwebs, like frequently oh, used, yeah. clearly, but totally empty. What or happens like in this place? Any or sort of or empty except for like a single locked candle lock, lock box or something. Like just yeah. one one thing in, in the room is that a lock box that clearly requires like two keys to open. Yeah. But doesn't have anything in it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bolts into so the if floor. you manage to find the two keys and open it, then you open it's like, but there's nothing in it. Who took, who took oh, and you would, hook, you would hook the door to the box, in, so you open the box, the door to the room would slam behind you. <laughs> hey, well, we're clearly... Wait, what the hell is going on? We're clearly in the market for designing some sort of murder mystery house. Because Visit us at binaryjazzforever.club. To this <laughs> We'd love to hang out with you in person. <laughs> and probably be, not kill you. Don't be shy about approaching us in public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sneak up behind us. We we totally love that. No one will no one will panic and stab you to death. Nope, no, never. Um, okay, so Danette uh, also emailed uh, frequent frequent uh, listener and submitter of questions, uh, and she says that she didn't get to hear. She has a two part question. Maybe we only get to one part. She says she didn't get to hear Allison's answer to the question about ties. Uh, what is your relationship, Allison? What is your relationship history with ties? Do you own them? Do you own any now? Wear them, like them. Oh, geez. Whew. I used to wear ties because I used to be super into, I don't know, like ska and like mm. that whole uh, Southern California in the 90s <laughs> scene. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I think that says enough. Um, I haven't worn a tie in ages, probably since. Maybe my retail days where I was, oh, I had to wear, I also had to wear ties uh, when I worked at Disneyland mm. um, of various fancy sorts. How did I not know you worked at Disneyland? Yeah. So I knew Allison worked at Disneyland. One of my first major I jobs. Like, I feel like that's, I mean, if you, I feel like if you live in Southern California, eventually you're going to get a job at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I it's, like, it's like Central a, Florida it's like too. everyone's first job. Yeah, I loved it. I love Disneyland still. I'm still one of those people. If I lived there, I might even have an annual pass. I was, to clarify, my job at Disneyland was merchandise hostess. <laughs> so uh, I worked retail at a theme park is basically what so that you, means. So you would, you would seat the merchandise, got it. Yeah. I you were an Imagineer. I was not an Imagineer. I was not a face character. Aren't we all Imagineers? No. I mean, deep down I am, I feel like, but. <laughs> it's, it's a specific job title. We're not all Imagineers. No. Has ensured I think that. we are at heart. At heart. No. Disney says it's, no. Or it's a trademark Disney we're not allowed no. to be. Sorry, your, your, your heart has been served. <laughs> See you in court. Uh, I, I would like, I. So, go ahead. What's the second part of the question? Uh, second part is unrelated. We can't uh, hanging in. Danette says she laughs every time she hears Dyson Sphere. Uh, it sounds <laughs> like a does. novelty food item worthy of being introduced into the turducken. If it was, what would the new name possibilities be? See, I feel like I feel like the turducken goes inside the Dyson Sphere. I agree. And then it's a it's a Dyson turducken. Yeah. Or or turducken sphere. Or turducken sphere. Yeah, turducken sphere. <laughs> Because I, I think the Dyson sphere is the thing about taking the energy from all the from all the solar. Do we really have to end on this note? It needs to take the energy. You're the one from I want to hear, and that's the second part of the Ned's question. So I regret my decision. It really does. Give the listeners what they want. Is it's what I true. Think. 
Give them what they Do want. Do the listeners want a Dyson Sphere? Apparently so. Oh. We, get, we get questions about Dyson Spheres. We are talking about Dyson Spheres. It absorbs the energy of the Chidekin and yeah. Yeah. radiates it more outward. But don't yeah, we I, all? I feel like there's, there's cooking complications with, with the Dice, the Sphere Duckin. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.